Welcome to the Berkshires Gone By, history and folklore about the westernmost and most beautiful county in Massachusetts. I'm your host, Brooke. In the early days of the Berkshires, there were really only two ways to get around. Walking, or by cart, either drawn by a horse or ox. But in 1886, a grand new venture was undertaken, beginning first in the town of Pittsfield. The first electric trolley car in the Berkshires. This mode of conveyance wasn't mind-blowing. There had been a horse-drawn trolley in Pittsfield since 1832. At first, it was just one line from the center of Pittsfield to the southern end of Pontusic Lake on only a little over three miles of track. It wasn't that much different than being pulled in a horse-drawn carriage, but that didn't matter. The people of the Berkshires were simply excited about innovation in general, and the rails on which the horse-drawn trolley was pulled made for a startlingly smooth ride, a completely new concept at the time. What was immensely impressive was the fact that with electricity, a horse was no longer needed. Also impressive was the hurried rate that new lines were laid. Residents had watched with anticipation as for some time the rails were set into the roads. Little by little, workmen would make their ways down the avenue, side streets, and country roads. It didn't take long for the rails to spread. Crews worked feverishly especially to line the main routes between towns and village centers up and down the county with track. William Collins Whitney had a hand in its creation. He'd been born not too far from the Berkshires in the town of Conway, Massachusetts, a small farming community. And though he wasn't born wealthy, he was the country cousin of some wealthy relatives. When he went away to college, they introduced him to people who'd give him an advantage in business, including his future wife. When they married, her dowry included a house on Fifth Avenue, but he wasn't about to rely on the wealth of his wife. And through smart business ventures, he'd expand their fortune beyond his wildest dreams. Soon, he was summering in Lenox, renting Ventfort Hall, then, he decided to buy land at the edge of Lenox and build the Antlers, his own summer resort, complete with a menagerie of exotic animals. During this flurry of investing, Whitney joined with George Mole and Thomas Post in 1898, whom worked for a law office in Lenox to invest in the sweeping move to install streetcar rail far and wide. Their funding made it possible for the Berkshire system to upgrade and expand even more. So much so that at its height, there were about nine streetcar companies running trolleys around the county. And not just the county. Cars ran over to Hoosick Falls, New York, up to Bennington, Vermont, down into North Cannon, Connecticut, there was even a line that ran to Huntington, an ambitious line that took millions to build and only lasted a few years, never making back its investment. Built in 1903, a streetcar called the Berkshire Hills was said to be the most luxurious ever constructed. It ran a North County line between North Adams and Bennington and had every convenience for a comfortable ride fine curtains and upholstery. It was the pride of the county trolley system. People used this trolley system to get to work and school or to go shopping, perhaps to the theater and farmers used it to move product around. As most streetcars had a section for cargo, they also helped transport the mail for the postal service. A passenger could also catch the streetcar at the corner and take it to the train station where they could take the train almost anywhere in the nation. This opened up the world to a Berkshire citizen who may not have before 
been able to travel far at all. In 1902, the Berkshire Trolley Railway system made national news, but not in the light the county had been hoping for. While on a visit to the Berkshires, President Teddy Roosevelt stopped for a speech in Pittsfield before hopping back into his horse-drawn coach with a few others, including his Secret Service agent, William Craig. They headed south for their next few stops, but before they were able to get very far, were overtaken and crashed with trolley car number 29 of the Pittsfield Electric Street Railway Company. I say crashed with because to this day, no one quite knows where the fault lies. People argue that it was the driver of the streetcar. Others argued that it was the fault of the coachman. Either way, the result was the same. The president and his friends were hurt. And Agent William Craig, his loyal guardian and friend, was dead. If you want to know the details of this event, we have an episode in the archive all about it, called The Presidential Crash. Craig was the first ever Secret Service agent killed in the line of duty. The president was not terribly injured, but cut his tour short. And with a heavy heart, he spoke of the loss of his friend at the Curtis Hotel in Lenox, and then the Red Lion Inn in Stockbridge, both places he had planned to visit. But instead, he hurried out of the state. The crash was headline news around the world, and wasn't the only crash in the Berkshires by any means. There was an accident in Lee in 1903 when a streetcar jumped its track at the end of a bridge. Both the bridge and the trolley were ruined. In 1910, 70 people were packed into a streetcar traveling at about 50 miles an hour. The trolley car left the track in time to smash into a supporting wall in Dalton at Gaffney Bridge. Almost all of those aboard suffered some degree of injury, and one was killed. Ridership didn't suffer too much. People still needed to get to the shops and to work. So the system grew, and riders hopped on and off. Love matches were even made. Not far away, in the town of Shelburne Falls, along the Mohawk Trail, a man boarded a street railway car. There he spotted a lovely young lady. It took some persistence, but they rode together often enough that the two eventually fell in love and were married. Rails were set along roads all over, expanding out from the center of the county like tendrils. But something new was on the horizon. Maybe not as new as I might make it sound. The car had been around for a while. It had been tinkered with and experimented on. Steam-powered, electric-powered, finally, most reliably, gas-powered. It took time for the engineers to get it right, and it took time after that for the price to come down so that even a blue-collar mill worker could consider owning one. Soon, however, cars were common enough that trolley ridership did begin to fall. Suddenly a person could go anywhere without waiting at a stop or needing to walk for some time up a side street where the tracks didn't run. Suddenly, a distance that took a day to travel could take only a few hours. People could leave at a moment's notice and go anywhere they wished. The freedom of the American open road was born. But they weren't good roads by any means. Most of them, all but those at the center of larger towns, were unpaved, muddy and rutted. But even that seemed to add to the thrill. People delighted in seeing what sort of mud holes their spirited little Model Ts could plow right through. And the thin tires did seem unstoppable. It didn't take long for streetcar companies to start going under. Those that remained tried to make up for the drop in ridership by increasing the fares and adding an additional fee for transfers, but it didn't help. As the price to ride went up, it only encouraged drivers to find other ways to get around. 
In addition to that, streetcar companies began neglecting the cars themselves, which led to less enjoyable rides. After some time, there were so many motorists that the owners of cars began to complain that trolleys were in the way, and the motorists wanted more roads paved. Having trolley lines in paved roads was, of course, perfectly possible, but it did make repairing and replacing rails much more expensive. The First World War came and went, and the lines remained, even had a short comeback. Though automobiles were growing in numbers, the shortages of fuel, rubber for tires, and rationing overall made driving one unthinkable for a few years. So many people who owned a car put it away until the end of the war and opted for the trolleys instead. After the war, however, the cars bounced right back and the trolley lines began to suffer anew. Many companies closed, but enough were running that residents without cars could still roll around the county with little difficulty. The trolley named the Berkshire Hills, was too costly to run, too fancy for the diminishing returns, and so was put into storage in 1922. It was the Great Depression that really put the nail in the coffin of the Berkshire Trolley Line companies. The prices had been climbing to counteract the losses, but when the stock market fell, no one could afford the higher rates. That, and there was a new player on the scene. A player that, unlike a trolley car, could switch up its route with little effort. The bus. In 1932, the last trolley car run in the county took place. A ride from Pittsfield to Dalton. The rails were left in the city streets and along the country roads for some time after that. It was costly to remove them. That was, until the Second World War, when removing them became patriotic. It was then that it's thought much of the line was torn up and used for scrap in the war effort. I say thought because not long ago, in 2015, while undertaking a resurfacing project, Great Barrington discovered that under the pavement of its main street were trolley rails. They'd simply been covered over. With the end of the war came a new boom in the auto industry, and it was obvious to everyone that the streetcar wasn't coming back. And with that, Berkshire streetcars were no more. So what happened? to these trolley cars themselves. Most of the remaining streetcars in the Berkshires were sent away for scrap or to be used in other lines that were still doing better financially. One was saved from the wrecker. The luxurious Berkshire Hills trolley was instead converted in 1932 into a restaurant and renamed the Berkshire Hills Diner. It served patrons from its stationary spot on Housatonic Street in Pittsfield for just over 60 years. Though some might not have recognized it as a trolley car, as the years passed, the trolley was clad in brick. That, with other subtle changes, hid its true appearance enough that many may not have realized what it once was. In 1994, however, it tragically caught fire. The Seashore Trolley Museum of Kennebunkport, Maine, who'd asked for the trolley in the past, suddenly found its current owner more willing to donate what was left of the Berkshire Hills. In 1995, it was moved to Maine and added to their extensive trolley collection. And, despite the fire, was deemed fit for restoration. However, it still hasn't been. Much of the museum is funded through donation, and those simply haven't been great enough to cover the cost of restoring the Berkshire Hills trolley. When the trolleys that they have that run 
and attract guests need that money for regular maintenance. The Berkshire Hills still resides there, however, in their protection. That trolley in Shelburne Falls, where a young man met a young lady and over time fell in love, it went through a transformation too. After the closing of the line, that young man bought the trolley car as a way to preserve the place where he and his love had first met. But he didn't have much more money to do anything with it. So, it sat for a while on his farm, before chickens moved in. Years went by, as well as generations of chickens, before the trolley car was passed along to the son of that man. Their son pulled the trolley off the farm and cleaned it up. After careful restoration and attention to every detail, the trolley car became the centerpiece of the Shelburne Falls Trolley Museum, where you can now ride in it along a short stretch of track, guided by knowledgeable volunteers who are happy to answer any questions. So, if you'd like to see some history of Berkshire County's trolley systems, there's still evidence of rail beds along roadways in many Berkshire towns. However, for actual trolleys, it seems like you'll have to travel elsewhere. But Shelburne Falls and Kennebunkport, Maine are lovely places to visit. And if you're interested in transportation history, both are worth the trip. Both the Shelburne Falls Trolley Museum in Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts, as well as the Seashore Trolley Museum in Kennebunkport, Maine, need donations to maintain their collections, as well as restore pieces they've been forced to set aside. This includes the streetcar named the Berkshire Hills. If you'd like to throw a few dollars their way, you can do so through their websites. Though a surprisingly fleeting portion of Berkshire history, the trolley car system left an indelible mark, and still has loyal fans. And if we're lucky, maybe someday, this sort of transportation will be available to us again. This has been The Berkshires Gone By, created, written, directed, and read by myself, Brooke Renier, and co-produced by Deanna Garner. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where I post pictures related to Berkshire history almost every day. You can also find more episodes on YouTube or by visiting www.theberkshiresgoneby.com, where there is every episode and specific photographs pertaining to each topic. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. Thanks for listening. <laughs>